Hello, my name is Becky. Welcome to my channel, Notes from the Sewing Room. Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you all about the Selkie London skirt that I made and giving you my lowdown on the fit and if I'd recommend the pattern. So thanks for tuning in and thanks for returning if you've seen my channel before. Um, in today's video I'm telling you all about the London skirt uh, that I made from the Selkie pattern. Um, I, as soon as I saw this pattern um, I thought it was right up my street. Um, it's got three different things um, in the pattern pack that you can make. Uh, one is the London skirt, there's a peplum blouse and there's also a dress. So I do hope to do um, a review of the top and the dress over the next few weeks. Um, so this if you like is part one of uh, my little review view series. Um, but in today's video I'm telling you all about the skirt. So I decided to cut the size 10 of the skirt after checking my uh, measurements. Um, it is worth double checking your measurements um, on what you usually are. Um, if you usually measure yourself in inches rather than centimetres you definitely need to check what you are um, because this pattern pack is actually mentioned, is actually measured in uh, centimetres instead. Hello, uh, my dog Bentley has just uh, joined me over here. I don't know if you can uh, see him there, you might just be able to see a little nose. So um, the skirt um, is uh, a fairly lengthy skirt, it's more of a mid-length type skirt. Um, so um, if that's what you like then great. For me I wanted it to come around about my knee. Um, so. Um, I'm quite tall, I'm 5 foot 10, so it is still a fairly long skirt even on me. So I decided to shorten the skirt by 3 inches, allowing myself uh, just 1 inch for a little turn up on the bottom um, for my hem basically. I was really pleased uh, with the, the end length uh, of my skirt, I, as I wanted it to come to around about my knee, it seemed to work quite well for me. One thing that you do need to bear in mind actually is the skirt pattern piece. Unusually I think, there's only one um, skirt pattern piece in the pack, so that's um, you have to look closely at the markings because um, either that's to cut one piece on the fold um, or two pieces for the back section of your skirt. So there are different markings of course for cutting on the fold and for cutting the two separate pieces. So um, what you could do is you could decide to trace your pattern piece for, for the front or the back and then use the actual original piece that comes in the pattern pack uh, for the other section. Um, I didn't decide to do that, I decided to literally fold over the excess uh, from um, the, the front piece so that I could cut the two back pieces instead um, just to try and save paper really um, but it's, it's up to you, uh, you might be more comfortable actually having the physical two copies of the front and the back uh, before you actually uh, cut your fabric. So in terms of the fabric that I used I've got the skirt just here to show you. It's worked out to be quite a structured skirt because of the type of fabric that I used, um, but I think it would also look really, really nice um, in a more lightweight fabric. I decided to use a medium weight denim for my project. It is a stretched denim that I decided to go for. Um, basically, I bought the fabric sometime after Christmas from Material Girl Laura, um, just because I liked it. I wasn't sure what I was gonna make with it, um, but because I already had it in my box of fabrics to use, I didn't really want to have to buy anything new for this project um, so I just decided to go for that. Um, I suppose the end result is my skirt has uh, ended up being quite structured um, but that is something that I quite like um, so um, that's worked out quite well for me. It means that the, the pleats in the um, in the skirt are quite obvious if you like and um, I think that's that's quite fun really. I wanted to kind of show them off um, particularly as my pattern is or should I say my skirt is made in this nice plain fabric. I decided to include pockets in my skirt. Um, I do find pockets quite practical um, for just putting the odd bit, bits and pieces in, in my pockets. Um, I think probably quite a lot of you do find pockets quite helpful as well. Um, and uh, I know that from uh, seeing different posts on Instagram and uh, watching different videos. Um, now the pattern doesn't actually come with a pocket piece. So all I did was I took a piece of baking paper, um, literally laid it on the table, drew around my hand uh, all the way around um, and made sure that I got a pocket that was um, the right size for my hand um, and I literally used the pattern piece um, to cut four little pieces of fabric from my pocket so um, two at the same time um, by cutting it on a double layer um, and they worked out to be sort of inseam pockets. If you do decide to add the pockets to um, your skirt I decided to measure around about nine centimeters down from uh, the very top of my skirt in the side seam um, to make sure that I got 
got um, the pockets in exactly the right place uh, for me. Um, like I say, I am quite tall, so it might be that you want to have your pockets slightly, slightly above where I have them or slightly below, uh, depending on what your preference is. Uh, one thing that I would say about when you are cutting out your main skirt pattern pieces is do you pay close attention to the markings that are on the top of the pattern piece to make sure that you get your pleats in exactly the right place? On my um, pattern that I got, I did decide to go for the paper version rather than the PDF. Um, there's something about paper patterns that I just really, really like. Um, I just kind of like how they stack up on my shelf and just look quite pretty and also it saves me the hassle of um, printing it out. I don't actually have a printer at home so it always means I have to go somewhere to print out my pattern pieces and then um, spend all the time sticking them together um, unless I have them um, sent off online perhaps and uh, have them printed out as AO versions but um, in this case I decided to go for the paper version even though it's slightly more expensive um, I thought it was going to be worth it for me um, in the long run. Um, but I would say that the markings that were on my paper version were slightly faint in places, so I did have to um, pay co close attention to where um, the markings were around the waistband area um, of the, the skirt pieces just to make sure that the pleats um, did go where they were supposed to. Regarding the pleats as well, um, the, the pattern booklet does tell you how to create the pleats. Um, it probably, probably sounds silly, I've made... Um, patterns that have got pleats in before but sometimes they're folded in different ways um, so I did have to uh, look at the pattern instructions to make sure that I was folding um, the pleats um, in the desired way I guess for this particular project to make sure that I um, my skirt ended up looking um, as it was supposed to. Now the waistband on this project is really fun, um, it's got um, a curved uh, section to the top of the waistband, I'm not sure if you can see it very well on the camera there. Um, I will put some pictures up so you can actually see me uh, wearing the skirt during this video. Um, it's got a gorgeous kind of shaping to the front of the skirt. Um, the waistband does end up being slightly longer than your regular waistband um, as it's got an overlap section at the back, uh, which I'll just show you here. So um, I decided to use a button closure at the top of my skirt. Um, you might decide to use a hook and eye fastening or a bar closure perhaps at the top instead. Um, I've got this nice big um, shiny button in my uh, box of buttons. Um, I am quite a big fan of buttons. So um, I've been waiting for a project to use this on and this, this was the thing I decided to, to use it for um, in this case. So um, yeah, I've got the button closure there and I decided to close the back section of my skirt with a lap zip. Um, you might decide to use an visible zip instead um, but in this case I used a regular zip and then literally um, created a kind of lap section um, at the sides of the zip um, at the side here and then top stitch that in place. I think that works really well for me and um, this particular uh, project. Um, if you do decide to do a zip in the similar way to I have, unless you want your zip to be particularly obvious, I would try and get a zip that's a similar colour to your actual fabric. In this case, I went for a grey zip. So you can see it just peeking through there, uh, but it's not um, kind of in your face, if you like. I decided to uh, cut my waistband on a single layer of fabric rather than um, on, a, on a double layer. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I got um, the shaping exactly spot on um, to create that lovely shaping around the front um, and also um, the pattern doesn't actually say to cut it on the fold um, so cutting it on a single layer seemed to work quite well for me. You do need to cut out two pieces of the waistband of course, uh, one for the outer waistband and one for the inner waistband. Um, one thing that I did to the waistband that it didn't actually say in the instructions was to understitch uh, the waistband just to make sure that it ni lies nice and flat so you can actually see this lovely curve um, at the end of your project. Um, so um, there's lots of instructions you can find online of how to understitch if you haven't done it before. Now I, I couldn't come to the dressmaker's ball this year um, which I was absolutely gutted about. Um, I had um, I had a chat with Freya from um, Crafty So and So about coming and I was really really excited uh, but when I actually went to get my ticket I thought Do you know what I just need to double check the date um, of the event and it turns out I'd already got some tickets booked on that particular evening to go and see um, Ben Fogel. Um, you might be familiar with Ben Fogel, he's climbed Everest, um, he's a bit of an adventurer um, and he was coming to Chesterfield which is not too far from where I live to um, do a talk um, all about his adventures. So um, I really really enjoyed the talk, it was brilliant. If he's come, come into your area I definitely recommend going to see him. Considering it was a lecture I wasn't really sure what to expect, I've never been to anything like that before uh, but it was, um, it was actually really funny, got lots of visual bits and 
Ellen. Uh, plus he's really handsome in real life, so that, that, was a, that was a winner from my point of view. But I decided to wear my skirt um, to go and see um, the Ben Fogel event that I went to. I will say I did feel quite dressed up wearing my skirt, uh, but I was desperate to wear it because it was um, fresh off the sewing machine, if you like. Um, but I wore it out with uh, black tights, uh, mustard high heel shoes. I don't very often get a chance to wear high heels, so because I was going out, I thought, yes, why not? Um, be, be lovely to wear them. Um, and I also wore it with a mustard cropped cardigan and uh, one of my sew over it um, silk cami tops, uh, which seemed to work quite well. So we had a lovely evening out and um, I do believe that you should wear whatever you want uh, rather than just uh, dressing uh, more casually um, just to fit in really. So yeah, that's my little, uh, my little rant there. Yeah, so I hope you found this um, video useful and uh, you know, allowed you to learn a little bit more about uh, the pattern. I realise I've actually not hold it up to actually show you. So this is, this is my skirt here, so you can see it. You probably can't see it too well on the camera there if I hold it up, so it is fairly long. Um, but you can see the front there and then um, the back section as well. So um, I do want to try and try out everything from um, the pattern pack um, of the Selkie pattern. So uh, next week on the video, I am going to try and make the uh, peplum uh, top version, which is version A on the pattern pack. Uh, the skirt that I made was version C. Um, and then possibly the week after, I'm going to try and make version B, which is the dress version. I really, really did enjoy making the pattern. It was something a little bit different. And to be honest, when, when I buy patterns, I don't very often make all three versions from the pattern pack um, so um, I think somewhere I've read that um, the Selkie pattern ladies were trying to create a sort of rounded wardrobe from creating this pattern um, and I think that you know if you do make all three versions then you will be making three items that you can wear uh, for lots of different occasions that's it for today's video I hope you found it um, enjoyable and um, if you have enjoyed watching the video please do hit the like button um, and subscribe to my channel and um, yeah I really do appreciate you tuning into my videos and um, I do enjoy making them so I hope you enjoy watching them as well but until next time I'll leave it there and I'll say see you later